<laughs> Words cannot describe how boring the bridge is without our stimulating conversations. I am a part of House Orcelio, an ancient dynasty of the Navis Nobilite. Since time immemorial, our family has served to advance knowledge, pushing at the boundaries of the dark unknown. The Starway Atlas contains 2,843 routes that chart the sectors of the Segmentum Obscurus and reach all the way from the Coronas Expanse to Holy Terra. And uniting the Imperium's thousands of worlds, House Orcelio is bound by commercial packs to houses Galeatis, Ortina, Drotus, and... There is a dark blue knot tightening on your neck, Lord Captain. I can see my reply is not satisfying your thirst for knowledge. What is it you desire to hear, exactly? You wish to know about me? I suppose I can help you with that. What would you like to know? Hardly. According to the Chronicles of the House, I was born on one of the Orcelio worlds. Vert... Vertifi... Oh, what was it? Please forgive me, Lord Captain. My childhood memories are too vague. Sometimes I dream about the colorful birds that built their nests in the garden. Or the servants dressed in purple livery. Or the blue fog that rolled over the lowlands behind the palace. But everything is covered in a rosy haze. Perhaps it is my imagination, not my memory, that is painting these pictures. My stay on the station was wholly dedicated to preparing me for my future duty. Astromancy, astrography, numerology, the histories of my house and the Imperium, as well as other disciplines. For many years, dozens of instructors tirelessly prepared me for my destiny. And once a year, great Regent Alronto would come to the station. He would entrust his beautiful vessel to my command, so that I could master the practical aspects of our art as well. The Regent gave me a bird from a sunlit planet once. I tried to befriend it and make it sing, but for some reason, it refused and died soon after. The instructors were too respectful of my duty to my house to waste precious time on idle chatter. Aside from them, there were only servants on the station, and you know they have their vocal cords removed, so they cannot break their vow of silence. And since the subject has been breached, Lord Captain, why do you not follow this honored tradition? Your decks are so garish. Uh, apologies, I meant noisy. The rabble don't just chatter. Sometimes they shout and even sing. Why do you allow such a lack of restraint? Rogue traders are highborn, are they not? Your words sound amazingly blasphemous. If a ruler's duty dictates the need for violence, would dispensing it not be their responsibility? I will contemplate your answer in solitude. The navigator's open eye is baneful to whoever the warp's ruinous shine falls upon and therefore it is the symbol of our power. We are the guiding stars of humanity, found worthy of an uncommon gift, and one of the duties that we bear is to guard our eye, even from wayward glances that may bear evil. Besides, I am aware that lesser servants of the Imperium may find our appearance repulsive. The Navigator Gene twists the features the rabble are used to seeing, and the magnificence of our role cannot be grasped by their feeble minds. <laughs> mm. 
Lord Captain, you are overstepping the bounds of propriety. like that, Lord Captain, could easily be misconstrued. You should familiarize yourself with some of the works in your library to learn the appropriate manner of conversing with a lady. It may be difficult to describe. You see, every navigator perceives the warp differently. My mentor, Great Regent Elronto, always described his travels through the Immaterium as a journey through a vast wood with countless paths. And I, assisting him in the first voyages, futilely tried to follow his example. But the wood would not reveal itself to me. But everything changed when I found my own key to this mystery. You see, I've always brightened up my rare moments of leisure time by painting. You may recall there was a workshop in my chambers. As soon as I imagined the warp as a blank canvas, an indescribable feeling came over me. I moved the brush, going deeper and deeper into my own painting. Visions were hidden within the vibrant colors of my palette and something inside me knew which should be brought out and which should be left behind. I woke up several days later, after the voyage was safely complete. The Emperor graced me with a gift. I can see inner life in addition to the mundane. You cannot know that a fruit has rotten from the inside until a blade slices it in two. I can see the rot from far away. It roils like swamp mud, oozing through the bright peel. Anger and boredom, sadness and joy. Everything that people shut away inside themselves is revealed to me like colors on the canvas of my world. You will hear no objection from me, Lord Captain. As the only voice of our family on this vessel, it is an honor. As long as your questions are courteous, I will answer every one of them. You are shrewd indeed. My ancestor charted that route while fleeing the enemies of humanity. They say the Emperor himself was his guide, because the warp expelled their vessel without a single loss. Unfortunately, the lips of those who relate this tale seep with disgusting green hubris. I think Kaleen Orselio was simply a skilled navigator. Oh, yes. The navigators of the house came to the Coronas Expanse fairly recently, a mere 208 years ago. Before that, our ancestors expanded the borders of humankind's dominion for the glory of the Emperor, blazing trails to different corners of the galaxy. Just as a rogue trader stands at the head of a protectorate, a Novator heads a navigator house. It is the Novator who decides where to look for alliances and which path their bloodline is destined to tread. As for our house, <clears throat> the transfer of power to a successor is currently underway. In the meantime, Great Regent Auronto Orselio is ensuring the stability of the house. So, says Regent Alronto, nothing is decided yet. Some people in the house become enshrouded in rolling gray clouds at the thought of me becoming the Novator. But even more are bound with dull leaden chains. They think I am not ready for such a burden. By all means. Sister Argenta shines like a guiding star, inspiring resolve in those around her, seemingly inexplicably. However, I see a dark and ugly fog billow behind her, contrasting sharply with her shining light. 
It burdens the Sister of Battle. It drags her down. Yet Argenta herself is hardly aware of it. Seneschal Viserion is among the few whose colors are a pleasure to look at. Whenever the Seneschal speaks, heavenly crystal clarity spreads around him. And whenever he is angered, dark blue clouds condense over him. And in his rare moments of joy, a pure gleam of sunset pink caresses the souls of those near him. Out of your entire retinue, Lord Captain, he is the only one I would trust with my life. Idira's emotions are like a maelstrom, bright, unbridled, enveloping her form like a wondrous kaleidoscope of colors, and as dangerous as a twisting warp storm. The riot of colors hides the truth from my eyes. What exactly is driving this woman? Is it her own will, or... Or is it the Immaterium, Lord Captain? Right here? Are you sure? Of course. Let us turn from personal matters to more pressing concerns. I have enjoyed your company. Thank you for the conversation.